Now, you guys might remember months back, I had gotten a new office chair, a new studio chair. And I was super excited when I got it because my old chair was so bad, I, I couldn't wait to get a new chair. I spent about 100, 125 bucks. And after I got it, it was absolute garbage, like garbage, absolute garbage. I freaking hated that thing. It started falling apart on me right away. In the videos, you guys might remember, remember hearing all the squeaking in my videos? That was my chair. And you know, eventually it was falling apart on me. I had to go back to the chair that I originally had that made me buy that one. Now I have a brand new studio chair. This is from Ewin, and let me just cut to the chase. I have a discount code for 30% off and an affiliate link down in the description. So if you guys want to get a new gaming chair, studio chair, or whatever, it comes in all different color options, like tons of flavors. So, you know, if there's a theme you're trying to go with or something like that, they have tons and tons of color options. And personally, like I said, I, it's way better quality than the one I had before. I can't speak to how it's going to be in a year or two, but it feels like really, really good quality. You know, the, the assembly, when I was putting it together, I could tell right away that it was way better than that other one I had just from putting it together. You guys know that, you know, if you put something together, you can tell how good a quality it is. This one has really nice fabric. I love the fabric. It's like a, a fake leather, like a pleather or something, but you know, it seems like it's a good fabric. It's very comfortable, really nice stitching. Um, the arms go up and down and they rotate side to side. Obviously the chair goes up and down and then the chair will lay back all the way. When I say all the way, I mean all the way, all the way. Like you can lay back too far to where you, you, you feel like you're too far back. Like you gotta sit up. Um, so it does go back very far. You could sleep in this thing, but all in all, you know, like I said, I'm very happy with it. I think it is really good quality and you know, it's worlds apart from that other one I had hands down. Like this is way better quality. And you know, with a 30% discount code, how can you go wrong? So if you want to get yourself a new office chair or gaming chair or whatever, save yourself 30% off and use my discount code. Let's get to the damn video. So we got a lot of new stuff to check out. Starting it off, we have the new GP Knives exclusive Spyderco Manix lightweight in Rex 45. Yeah, baby. Rex 45 steel with the lightweight handles that do have hardware. It's not a pin construction anymore, which I'm so happy to see because now that means that you can change your scales. Now I know people are going to ask, will original goat scales fit right now? No, I did try. They will not fit yet, but I'm going to work with, and we'll pull this back up here in one second. I'm going to work with the original goat so that they can uh, get them made. So hopefully they will have them in the very near future, um, which is really awesome because now that they're going to be doing, you know, the, the hardware on the lightweights instead of the pin construction, a lot of people are going to want to switch their, their scales. Now the lightweight scales are already awesome though. These are, this is so, so lightweight. And the thing is, is that when you take it apart, there's nothing in there. I mean, the only thing you have is the locking system. There's a little washer thing that, that kind of keys from this bit to over here, you know, for like the washers to spin on, but there's not much. Now, the lock is an incredibly strong lock. So, you know, for a lightweight, this is a super tough lightweight knife and not only super tough, but it also, like, if you look at the handles, and I always say this because I don't like FRN. I'm not a fan of FRN. However, if I'm going to have FRN, I want it to be Spydercos. And the reason why is because their stuff has, like, this ridge line around the edge. See that? Which makes it a lot more solid than other FRN. Yeah, you can flex it a little bit, but it's not much. And then the texture is like little dirt bike ramps, as you can see. And they offer a lot of texturing in wet conditions or whatever, you know? So because of the traction, you know, even though it's so lightweight, you can tell this is a super capable knife. And in my opinion, the Spyderco Manix is one of the, if not, it, personally for me, it's the most recommended knife I can think of um, from, from myself. And it's the knife that if any, if I had to choose one knife, you know, and I can only have one knife, I'd probably pick the Manix. Um, one, it's just such a useful knife design. I like the action. I, I also love the locking system. This is probably my favorite locking system of all locking systems. And the reason why is because of just how, listen to how it clicks in. 
that has a spring with a ball that engages behind the tang of the blade, making this a very durable, strong lock. Even after you have flipped it and, you know, uh, and fidgeted with it 10 million times and cut thousands of feet of cardboard, it's still rock solid. I love that. So because it's a knife, I feel like it is made to last a long time and it's made to go through tough stuff, you know, for long periods of time. That's why I love it so much. And now with Rex 45 steel or this one in Rex 45 steel, that's awesome. Rex 45 is a super high wear resistant steel. It takes an incredibly sharp edge. Now I'm going to test it because I haven't tested it enough to know if it takes a mirror edge better than a toothy edge, but um, I, we will f figure that out because, you know, I've sharpened a ton of Rex 45 and I've even put mirror polished edges on there, but I've never tested it side to side. Um, anyways, Awesome, awesome knife. It'll be linked down in the description. And by the way, if you like the lightweight feeling of the, the Manix Lightweight, check out Original Goat's aluminum scales. Even if you have a regular Manix or if you get the lightweight one when they make the, the, you know, the scales that'll fit these, there's not much difference here. This is very similar in weight. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit heavier, but not much. You can barely tell. So, you know, if you have the titanium scales, which are awesome too, you know, I have a pair of those, they're going to add quite a bit more weight than if it's the aluminum. So, and if you look, the aluminum has, you know, it's just a two-piece construction. These are super easy to install. The next one is the Sencut Traxler. <laughs> what a name. Um, very unique. It does have a sheep's foot blade, but if you look, the sheep's foot goes down and then it ramps up right here at the nose. Um, very slicey. It is a flat ground blade. This one has green micarta scales, but it does come in different options. So there is different flavors. Reversible deep carry clip, TA hardware all the way around. Good access to the liner. Very happy with that. And it is almost fall shut. Very, very smooth. It takes very little effort. If you give it any assistance, it's just going to shut. The detent, very well tuned. Nice jimping. Um, great action. Yeah, really good action. Uh, also, I like that I can easily reverse flick it. Can I thumb flick it? Yep, I can nice and also thumb flick it. It's so easy, I can even do it with my ring finger. Very comfortable in the hand. <clears throat> because the edge is a straight edge, when you're slicing with this, this is a knife that's going to stay in the cut all the way out to the tip. So knives with bellies, they'll tend to get to a certain point and then slip out because of the belly. This has a straight edge, so it's going to stay into the cut all the way out until you get to the tip. That's really awesome. So these do wind up working out really, really good for EDC use. Also, these tips, when they, they taper down like that and they're so low compared to the center of the pivot, you have maximum leverage down into that tip. So really, really awesome. The only negative I could come up with this on this one, and by the way, it's 9CR18 MOV steel. I should have already said that. If I was gonna come up with any negatives on this thing, because it is pretty cool, you know, whether it's your style or not, that, that's subjective. But the only negative I have is the sharpening tool and plunge grind. I wish it was better. I wish we had more sharpening here. Now, you have a couple, so it's not it's not like um, an absolute nightmare, but, but I would prefer more sharpening. I always like, you know, I like at least five to six good edges before I hit the plunge grind. And this one's, you know, closer than that. But all in all, man, I like that I can slow roll it very easily. This coated blade kind of sticks to you, you know, if you want to do the reverse flick. So it's kind of like it has multiple deployments. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. So, and these are super affordable. I mean, all sun cut knives are. Now, this next thing is actually pretty cool. You might have heard of Monthly Knife Club, but have you heard of the Monthly Zippo Club, where you can get random Zippos, and I don't know if you guys know this, but, uh, you know, Zippos come in all different kinds. I personally used to collect Zippos back in the day. I used to have a ton of different designs. I think they're pretty awesome. So, if you are into Zippos or lighters, period, you can get a monthly subscription to Real Authentic Zippos, 100% USA made. They got a lifetime warranty, you know, all that good stuff. And these two right here, just to take a quick look at them, this one has somewhat of like a tacky finish or a, like maybe like a matte finish with a flaming skull, which is pretty cool. I just filled it up, so. Very, very cool. And this one has somewhat like a, a slick finish with the 
tie I would call it tie dyed, but um, but yeah, it's it's a, a slippery finish. There we go. But yeah, pretty damn cool. I think these are uh, pretty awesome. You guys remember doing that when you were kids? Um, anyways, yeah, I used to I used to dig these things, man. I used to have so many different kinds. They have so many different sayings on them, so many different patterns, so many different finishes. They make phenomenal gifts. You know, especially if you know you know somebody who smokes cigars or cigarettes, or maybe even just you know lights a lot of a lot of fireworks. Maybe they light a lot of, light a lot of bonfires. Maybe they just like to have a cool Zippo because you know back in the day, and you don't see this as much anymore. And maybe, maybe it'll come back, but back in the day, everybody had a Zippo, you know, like it was a cool thing. And I remember like guys, like back in the day, you know, they, they take it out and they they'd smack it against their hip, light it, you know, light their, their cigarette or their cigar, click it back. And I used to be so fascinated with it, you know, and that's what kind of got me into them. And, you know, then I started realizing because like there was these places like at the mall and stuff that would have, you know, like uh, a huge section of them, all different kinds, all different styles and patterns. And like some of them would have like emblems on them and, you know, Harley Davidson ones, skull ones, all different kinds. And yeah, that to me, you know, kind of like knives, you know, I'm into that type of stuff. So, um, I always dug it. But anyways, if you guys want, I will link this down in the description for you guys to subscribe if you guys want to get a monthly subscription to Zippo Lighters. And like I said, man, they make great gifts and in everything. So, and they're just a cool thing to have in a collection. So, let's get to the next thing. We have the CJRB Mini Pyrite. Now, I actually have two of the exact same one here. Um, we also have a a mica, which we'll, might as well throw it up here because they're very tiny. However, my favorite is definitely the little mini pyrite. These things are so awesome. Man, are they fidget friendly. To me, that's a fantastic little reverse flicking knife. This is one of the best pinch grip knives I, I can even think of. As soon as you get it in hand, you'll know. You'll, you'll agree with me. Because the way the handle, the size of the handle, it just snuggles right up into your hand. You know, you can use it like this. You can go forward. You, you can manipulate it any way. It's like just a little razor blade. Very thin geometry. ARRPM9 steel. Both of them came with a really, really good edge. They're both riding on ceramic caged bearings. Now, these ones do have a little hint of red in certain areas. Now, I didn't even pick that up at first. It took me, you know, I had it for a couple days before I ever even realized that because it's hard to, hard to see. However, I do like the green pivot collar. Um, but yeah, I definitely like this even more than this one. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit more my style, even though this one technically is a little bit smaller, but yeah, just something about this little guy, man. This is a fantastic little knife. Um, and like, if you're a guy who likes small knives, you'll definitely love this. But you know, if your girlfriend or, you know, wife or daughter or whatever, um, is into knives, this would be a great option. But like I said, this is a great option for, for anybody. Uh, this is... You know, little knives like this that are this capable, these are so, so useful day to day, you know, because you have so much control over everything. You know, the blade, you're not super far from your cut. Whatever you're cutting, you have maximum leverage, maximum precision, and control. Now, the little drop point, the little mica, has the Ultim Scales. Now, this comes in a blacked out version with the Ultim Scales. Um, the, it does have a RPM nine steel and thumb stud action. It is really cool. You know, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, I do have another version of this one. So they do have different flavors of both of these, just so you know, like, so, you know, there, there's different ones. I will have everything linked down in the description for you to check out. Also guys, CJRB has a new model, the Frack. Now the Frack has a plain steel version and a frag steel version for like 69 bucks. One's $59, the other one's $69. So they have two affordable versions and an S90V titanium frag version. Personally, I think this knife looks dope. I love the look of it. I love the way the handle looks. I love the blade shape. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm hoping to get this one on the channel. If you guys, have, if any of you guys have tried this one, let me know down in the comments how you like it. Uh, like I said, I, I hope I get this on the channel very soon because this is definitely one up my alley. Next is the Matsy Lynx with 
collaboration with Combo Design. So this is a Combo and Matsy collaboration. And I gotta say, this is by far my favorite design from Matsy so far, by far. This is really, really cool. Now we have an M390 dual ground blade, but if you look, the hollow sweeps up a little bit. So the flat grind up here in the tip is very minimal. However, it's still very, very pokey, yet it does offer a little bit more strength out at the tip. Very thin geometry. I measured this about 11, 12 thousandths behind the edge with their edge angle. Um, then we have, um, like it, it has a, a satin blade, a dual satin blade. The handle is a titanium frame lock with a shred carbon fiber inlay on one side. Ooh. <laughs> a shred carbon fiber inlay on one side. We got the honeycomb pattern that we find on Matsy knives. I think that looks really cool. Love the pivot. And that gold kind of plays with the light a little bit. It looks really cool. It almost looks like, you know, like a honeycomb or something. Titanium mill pocket clip and backspacer. Now, the action. The action is pretty cool. So they have a flipper tab that's dug out. <laughs> so they dug out the handle right here so that the flipper tab does not have to be exposed, but it's basically inside the handle. But since they cut back the handle, it exposes the flipper tab and it flips really well. It is more of a light switch than a push button uh, because if you push button it, you, you'll, you know, it'll come around and hit you. So you want to light switch it, but the jimping is really good. Nice traction. The detent is well tuned for the flipper tab and for the location of the flipper tab. Kicks out there really well. Then the hole, the hole, this is my favorite. This is a fantastic hole deployment. You can thumb flick it. You can easily reverse flick it. I could probably reverse flick it with any one of my fingers. See that, even my pinky. So very good reverse flicking action. Um, the, the action just all around is really, really well done. The access to lock bar is good. Um, they didn't cut this back, but they chamfered the edges really well. So it's very, very comfortable, nice and smooth. You can tell it's riding on ceramic caged bearings. Now the ergonomics, also, again, really, really good. Nice thickness, nice depth, um, nice everything, nice width. It's just nice and comfortable hand. I do feel this little peak right there a little bit, but it doesn't bother me. It's not a hot spot. I just notice it. And then you can always choke up, you know, nice and tight to the edge if you really needed to. Pinch grips are going to be pretty good. You know, the, the blade is nice and thin. You know, I'm um, not sure exactly what thickness it is. I guess we could check really quick. 100, just under 120 thousandths. So nice thin blade stock. So yeah, I'm digging this thing. Negatives, let's talk about some quick negatives. One thing, sharpening tool and plunge grind, that's one thing that they could improve. Move back the end of the plunge grind. So you see the plunge grind starts here and it ends at the edge. You see how it tapers down, you can see the shadow of it or the lighting of it, it tapers down to the edge. You want the end of the plunge grind to be back here. So that all this steel right here is the same thickness of the grind so it doesn't get thicker so it stays the same thickness of the grind so that when you sharpen it, it doesn't create a smile. Because when I sharpen this, right here is going to hit my stone and it will, it'll, it'll cut into that. So it'll look bad. You know, it'll look like the, the rest of the edge will look good. And then right here, it'll just be like a mess. So that's something, you know, this is still a prototype, as you can see, prototype. So that's something that they can easily fix before production. No problems. Um, the next thing is... You know, th this is a small little nitpick and I don't think they should change anything, but you know, you do feel this little area right there when you, when you go down, but it's not bad, you know, it's not a n negative. So I don't even know why I brought it up. It it's fine, it's fine. Let me go to a real negative. The real negative is the inlay on one side. So I know the clip kind of matches the one side to the other. So I kind of see what they were doing, but a lot of people, and, and I hope they're hearing me right now, you have a massive amount of people that won't buy a knife that has something done on one side and not the other. Even if you took this little inlay and just put a little tiny one right there, something to make this side match this side. Because I'm telling you what, man, there's a lot of people in the knife community that that drives absolutely nuts. I literally just had a knife featured on the channel um, yesterday, or, you know, I don't know when you guys are watching this, the other day. And a bunch of comments, you know, I, I won't buy it because, you know, the one side is one thing and the other side is the other. So 
This isn't as bad as like a whole scale being one thing and the whole lock bar being another, but still, you know, it'd be nice to have a little inlay on this side. Other than those things, man, this thing's pretty top notch. Uh, like I said, they, they did a really, really good job on this. You know, from the detent to the action, the ergonomics, the, the, the design, you know, it's unique, it's different. Now the finger, the, the satin finish does take fingerprints really bad. So what I would say is in order to fix that, this is another suggestion. It's not a negative, it's a suggestion. Do a deep satin. Don't do a fine satin like this. This is too fine. Do a deep satin to where you can almost feel the satin finish. Uh, make it to where it's less polished. Because when it's polished like that, either one, polish it, <laughs> actually do a mirror polish, or two, do a deep satin. Because these fine satins, they just, man, they, they're so fingerprinty. They get so messy. They're easy to scratch. But a deep satin, though, will, will actually, even after you use it, it doesn't look scratched up or anything like that. So that's what I would recommend. Now, when you disengage it, and this is not a negative, but it's something they could think about, the detent, it's not late. So I don't want to make it seem like it is late. But because of the way the flipper tab design is, when you unlock it right there, the flipper tab's hitting you, right? Well, it, it goes past the detent there. If you get it in the right spot, it will go past. But you'll find sometimes you'll hit it and it'll be on, it'll be hitting the detent. So, you know, you got to get it just right, which is fine. Or you can just let it drop all the way down. Like that is another option. You can just let it drop. But if the detent ball was just slightly moved back, which I already know it's already pretty, pretty close. But if it was like right there, you know, you'd be past it as soon as you go right there. You know, um, anyways, that's not a deal breaker at all. That's just a tiny little suggestion in order to, to make it a little bit more fidgety on the clothes, even though it's still really, really good. Um, yeah. Anyways, very, very cool. So work hard, stay tough until next time. Peace.